Can you hear us okay? Online. I see if I see you there from Audit Scotland. Can you hear me? Yes. Yeah. That means it's working. Councillor Robertson, can you hear me online? Councillor Fraser. Yes, loud and clear, Chair. That's fine, thank you. OK. OK, well, before we start the meeting, I'll ask Councillor Duncan McInnes to lead us in a word of prayer. Councillor McInnes. Oh, Heavenly Father, <clears throat> we give you thanks this morning for giving us the opportunity to be gathered here in your presence, in the chamber here and online. And Lord, as we deliberate over all the business in front of us, we pray for the chair, the vice chair, and all those that have prepared the papers during such difficult and challenging times that we face. And Lord, at this time, we Pray and give thanks for the excellent work that all council staff have done through very difficult times from the chief executive, the deputy chief executive and the chief officers on all the various departments that we do have and the value that we must put on our dedicated staff and the asset they are to the community that they serve. And Lord, we pray for the many within our communities that are going through such challenging times as we <clears throat> see inflation running so high with energy costs and food costs impacting so much on those that are most in need within our community. And as we approach this time of year, that we reflect on the festive period that's a ahead of us, and we look at how we as a call have been so important to the many communities throughout the islands over the past year. And as we see the tremendous efforts that we have done to make sure that those that are most in need have been given support, financial and otherwise, through the difficult times that they have faced in the previous year. And Lord, we pray for the many from the youngest to the oldest in our community that are facing difficult times. And we think of all the children and the problems they are experiencing at the various stages in their lives as they recover from COVID. And as we see the difficult ad adaptations they've done to schooling and various other things in society, we welcome that as we come to a festive season that we see the return of family life and that families pay uh, an increasing significant part of life as they celebrate um, the birth of your Saviour. And Lord, as we look, we pray for those within our communities that are in ill health and look at our own councillors, Ushton and John A. as they move forward and hope that they will have successful um, reports from the medical examinations that they are following. And I welcome you today to see Councillor Fulton return back to health and the skills that you have provided in the hands of the medical profession that has seen such remarkable recovery in various illnesses that we do have. And Lord, as a call we see that the challenges and the opportunities that lie ahead of us, that we take the communities with us and no more so, so than the climate change agenda that we do see and that we work with the communities in ensuring that the natural resources that we do have within our own communities are, are released in such a way that we get maximum community benefit from all those resources and that the partnership that we develop with other agencies as we move forward have seen that we have fair fruition with the announcement this morning that Stornway Porter have attracted a, a new customer to the, the yard at Goat Island, which overall it was done in partnership with the Corley here with the creation of 25 new jobs that we'll be looking at leading shipbuilding and the 
types of propulsion that will be required. And Lord, we hope that those green shoots will appear throughout our community as we see the benefits of the natural resources that you have provided for us. And Lord, during those difficult times, we see that um, we do suffer from addiction amongst various sections within our own community and the impact that those are having on various families and that we work collectively to make sure that all the support that is necessary is provided and that we see communities in within communities the work that the shed in partnership with others have provided for so many in our own town here and as we move forward with our business we pray lord that everything will be done in an open and transparent way and that all the all the projects that the corner do provide is open and transparent for everyone to see and we ask all those things in your name and partner sins for Christ's sake. Amen. Thank you, Councillor McKay. Just a reminder that the meeting has now been recorded, and I too would like to put on record from the audit committee our appreciation to the staff for the tremendous work that they put in recently in preparing reports for us following the recent cyber attack. It hasn't been a difficult, it's been a very challenging and difficult time for staff throughout the whole corner. And I think we owe a great show of appreciation for all that because there's been a lot of work going on behind the scenes that we are unaware of. So I'd like to just record that in the audit committees. OK, in regards to declarations of interest, members must leave the chamber or end the call remotely uh, when it comes to declarations of interest. Um, and the meeting will be made available on the caller's web following the meeting. First item on the agenda then is the minutes of the meeting of the 21st September 2023, and that's for approval. Agreed. Thank you. Item two, we're on to the declaration of interest. Now members are asked to declare any interest, like I've said, if they have any items on the agenda. It will be helpful if members expressed why they're declaring an interest in the item concerned. Members in the chamber, please do so now by pressing your microphone on or remotely through Teams by using the raise hand function. And please ensure any declaration is repeated prior to the relevant item and you adhere to the protocol as previously indicated. I'm not seeing any lights on and I'm not seeing any hands raised, so I take it there are no declarations of interest. OK, thank you. Item three, we're on to the governance. This is regulation of investigatory powers. This was a report by the chief executive to inform the call of the outcome of the latest assessment by the investigatory powers commissioner office. And Mr. Tim Langley is available to speak to the report and answer any questions. Mr. Langley. Thank you, Chair. Uh, just a, a few brief comments. I hope the report's largely self explanatory. Um, <clears throat> the Regulation of Investigating Powers, uh, Scotland Act 2000, provides a, a statutory framework for the, for the lawful um, exercise of, of uh, investigatory powers, that is, for the, for the caller's purposes, um, covert surveillance which we use very, very rarely. In fact, we haven't used for, for now for several years, but the, the main the main user tends to be um, trading standards for various um, test purchases and, and things like that. Um, one of the parts of the regulation is um, oversight by uh, the Investigatory Powers Commissioner, IPCO, who conducts a, a um, in, uh, inspection every three years of all bodies carrying out um, these regulatory powers. Um, we had a, a, a relatively a good inspection in 2020. Since then, during COVID, uh, IPCO doesn't carry out um, full inspections, but has been carrying out um, preliminary assessments of compliance, which they did earlier this year remotely. And that was a, a clean assessment. Uh, the regulator decided based on on our compliance that there was no further full investigation required. However, he did um, he did uh, require us to to put the the policy on covert surveillance to uh, to members for approval. Hence, this report is just noting the update of uh, noting the outcome of the preliminary assessment and asking for your approval of the policy on covert surveillance, which is appended to the report. I won't take you through that in detail, but I'm happy to take any questions. Thank you, Mr. Langley. Uh, members, any questions for Mr. Langley? 
points. No. Okay, we agree. Recommendation 3.1. Okay. We now move into internal audit matters. Item four on your agenda. This is the audit progress for 23-24. Report by the Chief Internal Auditor summarizes the internal audit activity within Colonial and Shear for the period covering 1st April 2023 to 9th November 2023. The activity has been based on the approved strategic audit plan for the three years to 31st March 2026 and the revised operational internal audit plan for 23-24. And Mr. Sandy Gomez is available to speak to the report and answer any questions. Mr. Gomez. Thanks, Chair. Uh, yeah, this is just a usual progress report from ourselves. Um, section three shows that there are a number of audits that are currently in progress. Section four has the follow ups that form part of the agenda. And just a, a brief summary at section five, obviously, one of the notes there at 5.4 is about the cyber incident that happened on 7th of November. So we will continue to play a role to identify and assist the recovery uh, processes. Um, the appendix to the report just has a snapshot of where we are with all reports in the operational plan and happy to take any questions on it. Thank you, Mr. Gomez. Members, any questions on the plan? No, line, no. OK, members agree to note the report then. Thank you. We now move to the amended internal audit operational plan for 23-24. Again, a report by the chief internal auditor which seeks approval of the amended internal audit operational plan covering the period 23-24 to take cognizance of the reduced resource capacity in the internal audit section during the early part of the year. Mr. Gomez again will speak to this report and answer any questions. Mr. Gomez. Thanks, Chair. Uh, yeah, just uh... As mentioned at uh, the previous series, we will be taking forward the amended operational plan. The operational plan that was put forward and approved in April was based on us having a full staffing complement. So for the first four months of the year, we didn't have that. So it's just to kind of recognise that we needed to remove some of the items from the plan. So the three items that we've removed from the plan are the Barra and VAT or CAA community campus, just due to there being not sufficient work kind of uh, going on with that one. Uh, winter maintenance we removed. Uh, this is an order that's been done uh, quite regularly and um, never, well, not recently had any major concerns over. And uh, the peers and inspection, we've removed this from the plan. They are externally audited anyway and reported to this committee. And we're happy that we can take assurance from that based on the on the reports that we've seen in the past. So it's um, just to, to approve this uh, new plan, if everybody's happy with that. And obviously with the cyber incident, there may be a need for us to amend further in the coming months. Thanks. Thank you, Mr. Thank you, Mr. Gomez. And I think it's quite sensible the decisions you have taken there. Um, and it's just welcoming and encouraging that you have a new member of staff now in the team going forward. So and Eric is present with us in the, the chamber today. Members, got any questions on Mr. Gomez? No. Okay. Members, agree the recommendation at 3.1. Thank you. We now move into the internal audit follow up reports, item six on your agenda. The first one is the strategic housing investment plan, the ship, delivered in collaboration with HHP. This report by the Chief Internal Auditor provides an update on the findings of the original report on the Strategic Housing Investment Plan, the SHIP, delivery in collaboration with HHP, which was issued on 7th November 2022. And again, Mr. Gomez will speak to this report. Thanks, Chair. Uh, nothing really to add to that. All recommendations have been implemented, so I just thank the Department for their work in, in completing all those. Thanks. Thank you. Members, any? No. Okay, do members agree to note this report then? Thank you. The next one's learning disability and autism service. Again, a report by the Chief Internal Auditor, which provides an, an update on the findings of the original report on the learning disability and autism service, which was issued on the 27th of October 2022. And again, Mr. Gomez is available to speak to the report and answer questions. Mr. Gomez. Thanks, Chair. Yeah, so out of the 11 recommendations that we Initially reported on four of these have now been implemented. Uh, there's good progress being made on the rest, and we'll hope that uh, we'll follow up again to make sure that the rest of these are implemented soon. Thanks. Thank you, Mr. Gomez. Thank you. It's good that we are following up on the ones that are and will be reported back in due course. Thank you. 
I'm not seeing any questions from members online or in the chamber. Members agreed to note the report then. Thank you. Next one's corporate asset management. Item eight on your agenda. Again, a report by the Chief Internal Auditor, which provides an update on the findings of the original report on corporate asset management, which was issued on the 26th of January 2023. And again, it's Mr. Gomez who's going to speak to this report and answer any questions. Mr. Gomez. Thanks, Chair. Yeah, so six out of seven of the recommendations have been fully implemented. Uh, only a guidance note is just to be finalised and issued um, to satisfy the final outstanding recommendation. So, yes, yeah, very happy with the progress made on this as well. Thank you. And again, it is good progress on this report. So. Which I must say it does show the benefit of the follow up reports that we do have. Chief Executive, for you. Yes, very briefly, Chair. I think this one does merit a mention from, from me. Um, our corporate asset management, as, as members know, has improved significantly in recent years. And I think the, the report at Transportation and Infrastructure Committee on disposal of assets on asset issues shows the, the value of the coordinated approach that we've that we've taken and the work of this committee in monitoring that and making sure that that's followed through uh, has been particularly important. And it, it is very good to see uh, six out of seven uh, recommendations fully implemented. And obviously we'll, we'll follow that up. But on the wider front, I mean, it is it is a key part of our, our best value approach. It is a key part of realising the benefits of such assets that we have, uh, and such of them that have value, commercial value, uh, and that's an important part of our strategy. It's a small part because we're not a council that owns a lot of property but or land, but uh, it's it's nevertheless important and it's good to see it's well run. Thank you, Chair. Thank you, Chief Executive, for that. Thank you. OK, do members agree to note this report then? Thank you. The next one is item nine, bus contracts for public school and integrated services by the Chief Internal Order again, which provides an update on the findings of the original report on bus contracts, public school and integrated, which was issued on the 4th of January 2023. And Mr. Gomez is available to speak to this report and we'll have Mr. David McLeod online to answer any questions if there are any. Mr. Gomez first. Thanks, Chair. Yeah, so um, again, five recommendations in the original report. Two of these have been fully implemented. Uh, now, 2.3 and 2.5 are noted as due to be completed towards the end of this year, which is about now. So just as a way of a verbal update since um, issuing this report, um, one of the, the 2.3, uh, let me get to it. 2.3 is to do with the PVG checks, which are now almost all complete. And 2.5 is relating to the reimbursements of the electronic ticket machine fund. This has now been largely complete. Uh, there's only a, a small sum of about £137 still to be paid out, but this will be done within the next couple of weeks, uh, I'm informed. So, um, yes, happy with the progress on this as well. Thank you. And I see Mr. McLeod's online. David, do you want to come in? Well, thank you, Chair. Uh, as uh, um, Mr. Gomez has said, uh, we're, we're quite happy with the progress. Um, the the one outstanding payment was due to a retired operator, uh, and we had to make sure that we still had valid contact details and bank uh, accounts. So that's all been confirmed in the in the last few days. Uh, the, the email that we were using uh, was no longer in use, but we did manage to track him down, and uh, he has confirmed his bank details. So we'll get that processed to ASAP. Thanks for that, Mr. McLeod. Thank you. And again, good progress on that since we had it first. So, members, questions? No. Okay, members agree to note this report then. Thank you. Item 10 uh, Children's Services Providers Contracts Report by the Chief Internal Auditor, which provides an update on findings of the original report on Children's Services Providers Contracts which was issued on the 10th of February 2023. Mr Gomez is available to speak to this report. Mr Gomez. Thanks, Chair. Uh, yeah, so there were seven recommendations originally. Only three of these remain outstanding. Uh, these relate to some reviews and uh, inspections that are expected uh, to take place in due course. But happy to take any questions. Thank you. Um, there's one on here which I think we would... I don't know if Mr Libby's present. Is he, is he with us? Who, 
you could maybe give us an update on. No, I don't think he's here. Right. I'd ask maybe the chief executive to say something then, because I think there's something worth mentioning on here to do with the best value. Yes, Chair, this this perhaps crosses the boundary with the service committee, but it's it is a policy and resources committee matter. It's also an audit and scrutiny matter, and that is of course the we're we're looking at um all aspects of this service, whether it's whether it is best value to us, whether it meets what best meets our statutory duties as to how these services are delivered. They're delivered largely or partly externally at the moment. I know Mr Libby, as you all know, uh, is looking at whether a greater in-house provision in future might be the best way forward. And I think this committee, with its best value hat, has a, has a view on that too. So I, I'm, in a way, I'm glad to see that's partly implemented. I wouldn't have expected it to be fully implemented just now because the newly appointed service manager has a, an immediate task of concluding a review of these so that 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 shouldn't be a concern that will come back to education sport and children's services committee and to this committee once that work is done and that may well be at the next series thank you Jeff. thank you for that chief executive thank you okay do members agree to note the report then thank you item 11 a quality assurance and evaluation process Again, a report by the Chief Internal Auditor, which provides an update on the findings of the original report on contract audit, quality assurance and evaluation processes, which was issued on the 6th of March 2023. Mr Gomez will speak to this report and answer any questions. Mr Gomez. Thanks, Chair. Yes, only one outstanding recommendation to be implemented, and this just relates to training, which is due to be completed before the end of this financial year. So I'm um, happy with the progress on this as well. Thank you, Mr. Gomez. Thank you. Members agree to note the report. Thank you. We now move on to internal audit completed reviews. The first one's item number 12 on your agenda, which is to do with garage and fleet trading operations. This report by the Chief Internal Auditor has been prepared following an internal audit review of garage and fleet trading operation as part of the operational annual internal audit plan for 23 24. The purpose of the report is to provide an overview of the corners arrangements for the operation and the trading operation. And Mr. Gomez is going to speak to this report and answer any questions. Mr. Gomez. Thanks, Chair. Uh, yeah, so this is the report on garage and fleet. Um, overall, uh, as shown in section two, there were 11 recommendations, four of a medium risk, seven of a low risk, which uh, relate uh, primarily towards housekeeping issues. Uh, there were some issues around the regularity of stock checks and how they are processing it on the system. Uh, but we're confident that um, working with the department and the new system that they're due to implement in February, all being well, uh, will resolve a lot of these issues. Uh, we did make some recommendations around uh, the new system and backups. I'm pretty sure we're all aware about how important backups for systems are at the moment. Um, so yeah, so nothing of, of major concern here. Um, it, it, it is a, a service that's working well and um, a few recommendations here and there will, will help to improve that. Happy to take any questions. Thank you, Mr Gomez. Not seeing any questions, from Mr Gomez. No, yeah, members agreed to note the report. Thank you. Item number 13, homelessness. This report by the Chief Internal Auditor has been prepared following an internal audit review of homelessness as part of the Operational Annual Internal Audit Plan for 23 24 Board. The purpose of the report is to provide an overview of the cornless arrangements for the operation and management of homelessness. And Chrissy McCauley from the internal audit team will speak to this report and answer any questions. Ms. McCauley. Thank you, Chair. Uh, if I can get members to look at uh, page two of the report, 1.3, just six uh, low grade recommendations coming out of this report. It's a much improved review from the previous one we undertook. And we've given this review a substantial level of assurance. The findings, recommendations and management comments are all in the main body of the report at section three. Uh, happy to take any questions. Thank you, Ms. McCauley. Um, and it's good to see that we are at low, low, medium, well, low risk now most of the time. Um, there is quite a bit on the action plan, which I take it will be implemented as you have noted. Some of them are actually quite close to the date that we're actually at just now. 
31st December 2023. So do we have any update on on the ECM vote into December tomorrow? You can, whenever we're able to do it. Yeah, OK, thanks for that. Thank you. Okay, thank you. OK, um, but we will keep an eye on that because it is a, an area. There are areas of concern there that we need to, to keep an eye on. Thank you. OK, members agreed to note the report. Thank you. Item 14, Incident Reporting System, Assure. This report has been prepared following an internal audit review of incident reporting, safety, health and en environment, Assure system as part of the Operational Annual Internal Audit Plan of 23-24. The purpose of the report is to provide an overview of the Cornwall's arrangements for the operational management of incident reporting system, Assure. And again, it's Chrissy McCauley that's going to speak to the report and answer any questions. Ms. McCauley. appears to be working really well and we've given a full level of assurance in this area. A couple of isolated incidents we noted which are on page six and have been made known to management. Okay, thank you. Thank you, Chair. Any thank questions? You. Anyone got any questions for? No. Okay, members are to note the report then. Thank you. Item 15 is sports centres. Thank you, Vah. This report has been prepared following an internal audit review of sports centres, Lankiva, as part of the Operational Annual Internal Audit Plan for 23-24. The purpose of the report is to provide an overview of the Cornus arrangements for the operational management of the sports centres, Lankiva. And again, Chrissy McCauley is available to speak to the report, and we've got Ian Chi Campbell from the sports centre as well, who I would like to come in following Chrissy to explain and go through the, the action plan and the follow-ups where we are with some. Ms McCauley, first of all. Thank you, Chair. Remarks. Uh, two areas we have graded as a red, um, just uh, is issues that have been ongoing for some time, and where we identified staffing shortages, where the facilities have had to close down a number of days. Uh, the remaining issues are graded medium to low and are of a housekeeping nature. Um, the full scope of the review is at section three and um, any questions? Many Thank you. Uh, before I open it up for any questions, I'll ask uh, Mr. Campbell maybe to come in and to go through the. We've well, obviously got a few high, few high risks here. Few high risks, yeah. So maybe Mr. Campbell could give us a, some progress report. Mr. Thank Campbell, you, Chair. Uh, thanks, Chair. Yeah, um, the the two high level ones are, are around the assets, the properties that we have. Uh, is the the main one? Obviously, that that's. Um, down to capital budgets and, and maintenance budgets for how far that's going to be able to go. And uh, um, the uh, uh, chief officer of assets and infrastructure has, has made comment to that in, in, the, in the, the summary. And uh, the other one is around uh, staffing and closures around around the the sports centres. Some of that has been around uh, essential maintenance, was, which was done on the back of of COVID time and. Um, uh, was benef obviously beneficial, particularly to the ISL centre, in that the the uh, the main movable flo floor in the centre was was replaced. Uh, all parts were replaced in there. Uh, staffing issues are ongoing. Um, we 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 do have some staff shortages uh, within the service. Uh, uh, um, recruitment has, has been uh, proved quite difficult uh, in certain areas, in particular uh, the more rural areas. Um, we're trying to make the, the workforce as flexible as possible um, to to cover that, um, and um, yeah, we, we are probably over budget on our on our relief relief staff budget uh, as a, as a result of that. Um, but the, with the object of keeping the service the, the, as equitable as possible across all areas, uh, the other areas of uh, highlighted uh, in the report um, are. Uh, manageable within the service as we see it, we we can we we will uh, have a plan to 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 sort all these out um, by the uh, end of March um, and report back. Thank you, Mr. Campbell, and 
I mean, this will need to come back to us. Obviously, the thing we have high risks and we've got areas that are quite a few issues in this one. Do members have any questions for? I know progress has been done and we'll, we will keep monitoring it and capital budget restrictions are impacting on your service as well. So we, we will have to look into this. OK, members. OK, Councillor Ray McKenzie. Just a general point. Um, it's a staffing. I know it, it's not uh, directly, but it uh, obviously affects the report. It's a staffing uh, up complement up to date. So Campbell. Uh, we have four vacancies just now. Uh, one, another one to come uh, before the end of the year. Um, yeah, it, it's it's uh, and another one reducing their hours as well, uh, in Barra. So replacing these is, is becoming more difficult. We used to be able to get. Uh, I'm talking about used to. I mean, I've only taken over in June, but uh, I I know the service pretty well. The it used to be that there was a, an ongoing re revolution of of um, uh, school pupils would would be looking for work, and uh, your know, lifeguarding was was attractive. It's a decent wage. Um, but the the hours are tend to be evenings and and uh, weekends, which maybe not so attractive as as uh, nowadays as they may be used to. I don't know what the answer is, but uh, we we will be running as many courses as we can to train lifeguards uh, up and hopefully recruit uh, more in, in in the coming months. Thank you, Mr. Campbell. Does that, Mr. Kenz, you want to come back on? Yes, I, I know. Um... In respect of uh, the manager, the previous manager leaving, uh, I just wonder what the, has a has the appointment been? What is the situation? You know, because we, are we one post down there, or or somebody doing two posts at the same yeah. time? I don't know, Mr. What's Campbell. Can you, answer, can you answer that, Mr. Campbell? Of you know, does someone want to come back to Mr. McKenzie with the committee on this? Are you able to answer? Uh, the, there's a, a restructure has been put forward and um it would which will will change the way that the, the overall structure of the service uh, and hopefully make it more manageable and uh more streamlined uh there are also though um a restructure going on within education and children's services uh, as a whole with um with uh, the chief education officer being appointed recently uh so that Will all be incorporated within that within that. So it is in hand. Uh, it ha it has uh, been stalled a wee bit by the the, the breakdown in in the, the IT with the cyber attack. Uh, but hopefully that that will will be put through in the in the coming months. Uh, in the meantime, uh, yeah, I'm I'm covering both services, sports development and um, sports facilities. Um, but the, you know all all the staff. I can't thank them enough. They're, they're uh, they're taking on a wee bit extra responsibility to to help us through this time, and I don't think it's having any effect on the service. Okay, thank you. Are you happy with that, Councillor McKenzie? Can you, do you want to? Do you want to? Yeah, there is a, there is an issue there. Yeah, definitely a situation there. Yeah, yeah. Okay, thank you. Do members agree to note the report? We thank you. Now we're on to performance monitoring reports outstanding. Uh, you'll notice quite a lot of reports on there, but I think they're all in that timeliest fashion, and I think we're we're on top of all these. Yeah. Okay. Well, I think that brings the the, the meeting. But before we 